Well, hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. It's new and today I'm going to be showcasing a very special map, a very good strategy for farming eight mod corrupted tier 16 maps of your choice, utilizing tier 17, absolutely busted percent more multipliers, pack size, quant rolls. It's really quite amazing how many tier 16, eight mod corrupted maps you can target farm nowadays. And while this has been a staple strategy of mine throughout the leagues, Ever since the onset of tier 17 maps, I've basically just stayed in tier 17 maps at the end game, especially this late in the league. So it is pretty late in the league to be coming out with a strat like this. However, I got a good reason for it. I want to try a little Wildwood Fishing Rogue Exile Delirium Orb Scarab Farming, which is going to be streamed in the future and going to be a future YouTube video. But I'm going to need a lot of tier 16 maps to do what I want to do with that. So I could just buy them, try to buy them off TFT or whatever. It would be pretty expensive to do so. Or I could, you know, just farm them up myself and, you know, perhaps come out ahead currency-wise for that. I have been tracking the currency for a recent uh, 24 maps session that I'm doing, which has been done off stream. But I'm going to show you the very tail end of this. I've already done 23 maps. already got about 1,000 maps farm. I think I will hit the 1,000 map uh, benchmark by the end, which, you know, if you do a little bit of math, you know that that's a lot of maps per map. So we're going to do this right now. And I'm just going to go over the Atlas real quick to start. This is probably not going to come to too much of a surprise here. Of course, you're going to take all of the shaping nodes to increase the tiers of the maps that drop. If they don't hit tier 16 and you got all your voice zones in, it gets recycled into the back until you get the right tier. And then of course it needs to proc off singular focus. If it misses, uh, well, that's not good. But if it hits the right map, it will actually drop the map of your choice, in which case it's gonna be Glacier for me and what I wanna do. Uh, I'm spawning Delirium Mirror, which may seem a little odd, trying to force really thick Delirium. I'm gonna be doing, once again, a kind of a similar strat to what I've already been doing on 1,000 maps, which is focused on native monsters and cranking up the drops from them. One way you can do that is slamming a bunch of Deli Orbs on your map. That gets kind of expensive, or you can just put Delirium on automatically, which is actually a pretty cool way of doing it. Although if you do it this way here, you, you can't back out of 100% Deli for over half of the map. Uh, this node here, Descend into Madness, force, or makes the Delirium mirror expand very quickly. And you get, I believe, if the data is the same as it's been in League Pass, 50% more quantity of maps will drop from monsters that spawned in the map, which is gonna be a big deal with some of the cartographer scarabs we're gonna be using. I'm also putting Beyond on here, which seems a little odd. I tinkered around with Legion and a few other things. I felt like Beyond is probably the best here. Beyond does drop maps occasionally, and there are, it, you know, the pack size focus and everything can be pretty terrific for the map drops. Increased effect of modifiers, of course, all around. The invasive adversaries. Going Shrine coming on the back end, but I'm going to go ahead and fudge in with overloaded circuits so I could get, you know, some of the nice Beyond stuff. This just fleshed out the Atlas better. I felt to do it that way, I might miss. I don't really care about the Covetous Shrine. I would like to get uh, this one for the additional Shrine, but it's not the end of the world if I miss. Just, you know, taking the usual stuff plus Beyond and Delirium Mirrors uh, in this case. Yeah, of course I'm going to be wanting to get the Map Dupe Altar, and Quant Altars are going to be pretty huge for this strat. Consistently, I've been dropping 30, at least 30 maps per map. I, ironically, the one time I didn't drop... 30 maps is when I had a 13k Wildwood Juice that was purple heavy, and I dropped only 25 maps on that one. So that was an interesting find. It would seem that uh, the Wildwood can uh, thwart the number of map drops you get normally. Anyway, uh, this is the dump tab setup. Again, I'm 23 out of 24 maps done, A, B, C. We're going to run the 24th map. And to show you kind of what maps I've been running, well, I got the Regex down below. It's basically the same as one I've already been doing for a while, except I subbed out currency for maps as a potential role and this map right here has three map rolls 50 50 50 and then a pack size roll which took it from the 30s to the 50 percent range and this is just a really nice standard map and a lot of the maps that i ran were like this i also ran some antagonist maps uh, if you don't know what antagonist is that is that modifier here increased number of rares rare monsters each have two additional modifiers which does seem to impact uh the monsters quite a bit drops a lot of additional maps on rare monsters as you may very well know that's how it works pretty well especially in conjunction with this scarab which is going to play a major role in here and so this scarab i usually use three of these 
one of these and one of these. That's a typical setup. And we've seen this setup advertised from other content creators uh, far and wide. However, uh, on map number 23, I decided to run a map like this and sub out one of the multitude scarabs for a bloodlines. Interestingly enough, I hit a record 74 maps per map with a pretty typical result. No map dupes, nothing, just, you know, a few quant alters, nothing huge. That was a good 20 maps more than I normally find. Now, that does make <laughs> the investment costs go up, obviously, uh, because Bloodline Scarab is about one divine. Uh, but anyway, for the sake of tracking things, you know, I'm, I'm going to add in what I did, basically. Just kind of throwing you a fast one here at the very last second to suggest that the Bloodline Scarab, if you have maps rolled as well as this, especially if they are pack size focused, that's a really good idea. Not if it's an antagonist mod focused, of course. But anyway, I'm running four modifiers, basically, of either maps, pack size, or the antagonist mod. Four or more modifiers is good enough for me. And, you know, it's not that hard to hit those maps. I already test ran, you know, a map rolling showcase. Maybe it's a little bit harder uh, than it is to hit the scarabs or the currency. I also hit a few maps like this with the scarab rolls and, you know, make a lot of currency back on those. Anyway... Yeah, this is where we're at. This is dump tabs, kind of a snapshot in time, and this is a typical map. Now, this is not the map I'm going to run. I'm actually going to run this one. So I figure we'll have some fun. We'll, we'll do a trophy map for you guys. This, Of course, all maps have six modifiers. Every single one of these modifiers is either percent maps or a pack size roll. There are four map rolls here, and there are two pack size rolls. This is effectively a perfect map. And I'm just putting regular quality on here. I can't put, put a map chisel on there. It doesn't exist. I could put pack size on there. But I think it's smarter to just put quality uh, normally to, you know, the price difference is just so severe that it's probably a good idea. All right. So we'll slam this one in here. And just like I said, subbing out one of the multitudes for bloodlines in the event that the map is really well rolled. I think it's a good idea to do that. We've got domination on the map device. We're going to get three additional notables from the Atlas, kind of saving some notables that way. Uh, and, you know, I I'm having a little second guessing thoughts about this Scarab. Maybe if I ran three of these and one of these, I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think Cartographer of Escalation is better than a third multitude in this case. Probably is, uh, considering Bloodline is going to be attracting uh, additional map drops there. Now, and I do believe there's a synergy, by the way, between the Multitude Scarab and Bloodlines based off of just one map. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens here. Let's do this. So this is going to be fun. You're going to see tons of... I, I love doing a map like this. I just haven't had a good reason to do it for a while. But just dropping 8 mod corrupted maps like crazy is awesome. They're worth about 10c a piece, depending on what map you're shooting for. And yeah, it can just be absolutely fantastic. Got a blight to do later. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I have seen starts like this before. No bismuth flat bismuth ore would have been insane on this map, but it didn't happen. And yeah, that's just a little too much <laughs> going on. I can't just stand still like that. I was gonna grab the shrine. Uh, I still want to rush the boss if I if possible. So yeah. Monsters are really tanky. That is such an insane number of maps. Actually insane. Uh, you can see the Dela gets pretty crazy once we get up to around this spot. And I can't just sort of skip. This is worse than the typical thousand map runs that I'm doing. This is actually 100% Dela. 96% reduced damage taken from magic and normal monsters. Uh, it's not so bad against rares and uniques. But... Yeah, these, this is normal and magic heavy monster, huge pack size stuff, so they are super, super tanky, and that's why it just feels like I'm not doing any damage. Now, the boss, ironically, probably won't be that bad. Yeah, the boss isn't really that bad. Cool thing is, the Deli Mirrors, I get some extra mobs here, and I have seen maps drop off random mobs up here, not from the Deli Monsters, but actually from the Beyond that spawns from the Deli. So, be, again, Beyond Monsters do drop maps and the reason i'm putting delhi on there is to spawn more beyond mobs uh but more more so that you, you got to understand the monsters back here they spawned when the map spawned not the delhi and the beyond monsters necessarily but like all the regular native monsters they spawned with the map 
they have a 50%, I believe, a 50% multiplier, separate multiplier of quantity of drops, including maps, which is it's not that easy to crank up the number of maps that drop. There aren't that many ways to do it. All right, I don't really care about unique drops. One thing about this farm, you, you're really not target farming you know, anything except the maps. I will say, however, if you do the antagonist role in there, you will start to see a few, you know, uniques, currency, scarabs come into play. But, I mean, taking a look at that atlas again, you'll notice that I really, I've foregone loot of any kind, mostly, except for the maps. I'll come back later to clear that stuff. Hopefully I'll be able to kind of, you know, especially uh, in the harder portion of this map, I... I Ah, oh, it's a cooldown map. I see. I was trying to <laughs> flame dash. It wasn't working. That's just great. Again, I, I do want to clarify. This is a trophy map here. You're not going to see this many maps dropping in a map. Almost no matter what. Unless you also get your hands on a trophy map. <laughs> Again, this is absolutely insane. Mods. Ended up being 372% more maps with 140% pack size. <laughs> It's just absolutely bonkers. This is this is definitely a threshold above what I saw on any of the other maps. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it. I, I wonder if possibly possibly we might get a hundred maps out of this map. I I doubt it. Would have probably had to get a map dupe early for that to be a thing. Oh, this would have been nice earlier. I think right here is about, is the line where it turns into 100% deli. Somewhere right in here. It's great. Now if you look closely with the cartographer scarab of multitudes, those monsters are special. They have a really really high chance of dropping maps but even the normal monsters there can drop maps i i believe anyway i believe they can but the interesting thing is what happens if that pack spawns magic and i believe i saw with the antagonist mod that pack spawn rare one monster and one monster would drop like three or four separate maps pretty good indicator that there's some synergies there with that scarab and getting you know better than just normal monsters spawned out of it i could be wrong but i think there's something there should probably do the rest here in case there is another eldritch altar looks like for eldritch altars this was not that good not very good considering the pack size to only get two Want altars before the end? I would say that's definitely below average. So, not even lucky on that. Didn't get the map dupe either. I don't know, something might happen at the end, but I mean, you know, basically clear the map anyway. Look at that. I mean, I have to assume that's some of those cartographer multitude packs. To see maps drop like that. Pretty wild. And, you know, we, we can go ahead and do this here. Basic currency dupes. Oh, oh, map dupes now? It's too late! It's too late! No! It spawned at the beginning of the map, too. <laughs> oh, it feels bad, man. Could have had so many more. Could have had so many more maps. It's a big roll, too. Uh, well... I guess we'll see if this does anything. I don't even know why I'm messing with this. With fun, I guess. A silo map. Oh yeah, uh, you can have conversion loot. One one nice thing about the antagonist mod approach is that sometimes you will get a rare monster convert all of its loot into maps. And I did see uh, in in the course of 24 maps, one time I had like, it was like 9, 8 mod corrupted glacier maps at once. 
which is pretty insane. Now, normally you're going to see some, some maps spawn out of these monsters because it's actually the beyond that's spawning here. That's why it's like lagging and freaking out. Um, last time I did a blight, I saw a few maps just sort of spawn out of thin air. And that's the evidence of beyond. But anyway, that's, that's pretty impressive. Number of additional maps, and some of those will have been the dupes. <laughs> yeah, even, uh... Even these cysts here can drop maps, crazy enough. And they are affected by the percent more map multiplier, but not the dupe. And by golly, I have already capped out on the number of maps. So we are going to count these maps. I am not going to disappoint you. I know you want to see how many this is. Okay, guys. I did the map. And it turned out 113 maps dropped. I, honestly, I can't believe that I dropped that many. And again, I want to be very clear. That was a trophy map. Not representative of typical drops. What is representative is a map with four map rolls. 150% more maps. 57% pack size or whatever. And that one gave me about, I think it was 74, that map. It was just one map. No, for sure, but that is probably much more representative of an accurate number. So I would expect with a Bloodline Scarab, somewhere between 60 and 80 maps per map, usually. And without it, probably somewhere between 40 and 60, maybe, at the top end. So maybe sometimes less than 40, uh, but pretty close to that. So that's kind of two individual sets up, two individual setups that... I would perhaps run probably would favor the more higher end one because i just that's how i like to roll <laughs> you know how it is uh, but anyway yeah dump tabs all in here i do have well over a thousand maps after farming 24. so let's get to the numbers shall we here are the final results 1113 glacier maps farmed across 24 sanctuary maps i choose sanctuary because it Notoriously has the highest density, monster density. Uh, you can do whatever map you want. It doesn't matter a whole lot if you kill the boss, but it is nice for the sake of the Eldritch Altars. And I do typically get one or two maps off of the boss, by the way. Uh, 24 maps, 10 Devouring Fragments. Okay, uh, I do have a couple puzzle boxes. Again, I, I did have a couple of Wisp maps, so that's where that came from mostly. A couple Scarabs, you know, one unique, not that great of loot in 24 maps, right? You can tell it's obviously the huge focus is on maps now it is pricing these at 2.5 chaos a piece which is obviously not accurate so i added 7.5 chaos a piece per map to simulate a value of 10 chaos per map which i think is on the conservative side if anything depending on if you're using the regex or not and you can use tft to sell these maps it doesn't have to be glacier by the way it can be uh, whatever is the most valuable at the time but uh yeah that that's everything that is there Okay, and so here's the breakdown. These are the numbers for how much everything costs. 21 divines for 24 maps. Uh, almost nothing for chisels. About 6 divines for map rolls. Of course, that last one, it wasn't that last map. Map is an anomaly in the quality of roll, but the other 23 would fit that uh, pretty easily. A little bit extra for the map device because I'm running that keystone that makes it cost twice as much. 26 divines for the scarab so basically without bloodlines it's one divine per map in scarab cost but with the bloodlines it'd be almost two zero div for deli orbs actually not running deli orbs which is nice save some currency there so um investment cost 55 divines 2.3 per map for how i ran these maps gross of almost 120 div 64 divines net and that puts me around 2.7 divines per map at a value of 10c per eight mod corrupted glacier map and that would be around 23 div per hour, about seven minutes per map. Took a little longer than it does for the other farm because there are some mechanics. You saw me do a blight there. Sometimes I do, you know, I do a legion or an abyss. And then also the monsters are actually a lot more tanky too because a lot of them are taking 96% less damage, which is pretty rough. That's why I was using the um, Oriath's End Flask as well. All right, guys, so that's it. 113 maps in one map. More typical results will be somewhere between 40 and 80 maps per map, depending on if you use the Bloodline Scarab or the Triple Cartographer Multitude Scarab. 
Uh, so that's kind of the TLDR there. Obviously, there's some advantage and disadvantage. You can go for lesser quality rolls if you really wanted to. I would not run a map with anything less than 100% more maps. And probably at least either a pack size roll or the antagonist mod as a minimum. And if I, if I was staying on the lower end, I would just do triple multitude scarab. But if I was going on the higher end with four or five or hell, even six good modifiers for this farm absolutely run the bloodline scarab instead i mean that definitely made a difference it was at least 30 percent more uh, map drops compared to the other strat uh, at the high end so it's very pleased to see that and i i know that a lot of advert uh, a lot of strats were advertising you know 30 40 maybe 50 maps per map so this kind of blows them out of the water but it is very much at the high end of farming possibilities and you know what to be honest guys i don't know if this is the best atlas i didn't really test enough to know for sure there could be some other possible things out there i did test legion a little you know i'm very familiar with strong box and how that can go but i think again just cannot sleep on those native monsters with the delirium quant multiplier and everything and just juicing up pack sides like crazy through the numbers that you can get on tier 17s <laughs> bloodline scarab especially you cannot sleep on that that is really really good one thing i wish i had tested was maybe alva uh, not necessarily like all in alva but but just adding alva you know it could drop beyond and get alva on every map that might be smarter uh, somebody might try that and come out with better results anyway let me know what you think let me know if you uh are going to employ this strategy to farm up some 216 i i wouldn't count on the market necessarily being great this late in the league but if you need the maps yourself like i do it's a great strat for sure. Um, although you do obviously need a good character to do what I just did. And if you didn't have a crazy strong character, you might. You would almost certainly want to settle for putting Deli Orbs on the map. Two or three maybe would be a nice uh, compromise there. It would cost more per map, but at least the maps will be more doable. Also, uh, I do want to clarify one more time. Antagonist modifier, if you're running a headhunter, makes all of this way easier. You can just run through a map with like 60, 70 headhunter buffs. It doesn't matter if monsters are taking 96% less damage when you have that many headhunter buffs. Uh, if you still have a you know pretty good build. I noticed for myself it was a total cakewalk uh, if I did that variation of it. I didn't showcase that here, but that is... Yeah, I showcased kind of the hardest version of what uh, it takes to get that many maps. So, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the other side. Farming some rogue exiles. Getting a whole bunch of currencies. Maybe some mirrors. And locks by uh, by way of tier 16s. That would be interesting. <laughs>